Hey, good afternoon. I am so excited for our next session on equipping minds in academics and the arts. And Addison and Amy Page are back with us. They were here two years ago and it was an amazing session. And so I'm going to let um, Amy introduce them and how they've been doing equipping minds because she has been absolutely incredible. Her yeah. gifts, she downplays her gifts tremendously. I'm just going to tell you, as you see this, this was her as a mom who had, had homeschooled for many years yeah. and she has a strong visual arts background in theater. So her creativity um, level is off the charts. So her ability to see this and take this and bridge it to academics is get ready to be, to be blown away. That's all I'm going to say. I don't know if I can live up to that. No, no, no. <laughs> <My introduction. laughs> um, like Carol said, I'm Amy Page. This is Addison. And how old are you? 18. What grade are you in? Sophomore. Sophomore. And high school. Where do you go to school? Cal Christian Academy of Louisville. Um, and we started Equipping Minds, I guess it's been about four and a half years ago. And I was just word of mouth, another mom whose daughter has Down syndrome. We were friends and we were talking. She's like, hey, have you ever heard of this program? I was like, no, tell me more. <laughs> so I called Carol, found out she was like literally in our backyard in Frankfurt. We're from Louisville. And um, we went to meet with her and we were just blown away at this program and the results that they that she has seen. So when we brought it home, I will tell you if this is your first time, I'm sure there's a little bit of you that's a little overwhelmed <laughs> at all of the information. And I will tell you that's how I felt as a mom. Uh, like Carol said, I, my background is basically I'm a mom first and I do have a background in arts, um, theater, dance, music, that kind of thing. And, um, but we homeschooled for several years before um, Addison started at Christian Academy. And when I saw Equipping Minds at first, I was overwhelmed with how much information there was. So I just started really small. And that's the one thing I would say is just, just start. It doesn't matter where and what you do, just start with something, start small. And the more you do it, the more familiar it becomes, the more comfortable you are, the easier it will be to be creative and think outside the box. And so that's kind of what we did. Um, then we moved into the schooling schooling years. And, and this all happened really, I think it was maybe the year before COVID. So then we got hit with that. And he was in school at the time. So then we got hit with, oh, school at home all the time. And so I was just looking for different ways of how to how to take what Equipping Minds offers and what we were learning and what Addison already had a foundation for in that and then bridge that to academics. So I'm going to talk about two things today, and that's going to be the academic piece and then the arts piece. Um, do you want to do the slide? Yeah. Okay. So you can go on to the next one. As I'm sure you guys have already talked about, a lot of the things that are needed, yes, that is you, <laughs> that are needed, the cognitive tools that we need for learning. We have memory, attention, processing, logic and reasoning, executive functioning, comprehension, and obviously there's a lot more. Um, these pictures are just a few uh, samples of some of the things that we have done with Addison uh, through Equipping Minds as we're applying those to his schoolwork. So when I do Equipping Minds, with academics, it's everything. <laughs> like we use it in reading, we use it in math, grammar, vocabulary, history, science, music. Um, we use it for building study guides and note-taking, handwriting skills. If you guys have already learned about the symbols, you know that all of those strokes lead up to handwriting skills. Um, problem solving, logic, reasoning. We use it in Bible class. Matter of fact, we're doing that right now. He's working on a scripture memory passage, and we've used the colors to color code words so that to help him memorize that. And then the arts. So I think we skipped some. Yeah. What's that? There we go. 
There's that. Yep. So There's the next that. one's math, I think. Uh -huh. So um, using equipping minds in math, we use the colors for everything. Yep. What are those? Color cubes. That's right. And because Addison has already learned the numbers and the colors and what's associated with what he already knows, what is green? One. What is blue? Two. What is orange? Six. Very good. So because he already had that foundation, I started using that to work on things like place value. Um, if you can see, uh, can you see the picture well enough up there? Okay. Mm -hmm. That um, what I would do is we would make our columns for ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, and I'd put a cube underneath that and he'd tell me what number that was. Well, then you add a cube. So then you have, what is that black and blue up there? Okay. So black and blue, what number would that be? So we have black and then blue side by side. I don't think you can see oh, up okay. there. Can you see up there? Like all the way over on the left? Nope. Okay. <laughs> so he he's able to take those and um, say what color is, I mean, what number is black? That's five. Okay. What number is blue? That's two. So what would this number be? That's 52. 52. That's right. Exactly. And so then he would do the same thing. We would just add one for each each place value. And we've gone all the way up to 100,000 place value. So um, that's that's how we've been using that. Abstract thinking. That's another thing. Mental math. Um, we would take the color cubes. This is just a, an example. And I would put the cubes on a whiteboard and I put a plus sign or sometimes a minus subtraction sign, depending on what we're working on. And Addison would, would look at those. He would have to know. He didn't see numbers. He would have to know what color meant equals what number and so putting those together what is that what is that number together and then he would add them and he's adding those mentally and then we would use the corresponding cubes at the bottom for him to find the answer or to note his answer um so this one actually the uh, the clocks we're working currently on um time <laughs> and a lot of times when we're looking at the color show up okay up there. Yeah. So a lot of times when you're looking at a word problem, you have to break that down into steps. And so when you do a word problem, you're going to ask yourself, well, what's the first step? And obviously that varies depending on the word problem. But I would go back and I would we would use colored pens and highlight, okay, step number one, that's going to be green. So whatever step number one, whatever information we're looking for, we're going to use a green pen and we're going to underline it, draw a circle around it, whatever you want to do. Um, then we're going to look for step number two. And step number two would be what color? Blue. Blue. That's right. So we would mark that with blue. And then step number three would be red. They've already learned mm -hmm. the colors, right? Okay. Well, up to five, but we expose them through nine. Okay. <laughs> we just learned our so president. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you're ooh, still going to be above them right now, though. <laughs> okay. they're, getting, they're getting there. They're getting there. So we would use the colors to break down the steps. And then that gave him a visual aid to, to know, okay, well, where do I start? I start with green because that's step number one. Then we would find that piece of information. And then sequentially we go step number two step number three so is everybody tracking so far okay <laughs> good um language arts addison is a sophomore in high school so we implemented this i guess you would have been middle school like sixth grade maybe um when we yeah when we started so you can take the, the nice thing about this is you can go all the way down. I have a two-year-old granddaughter, and when she was over home for Christmas, we played blink. Like we did red on red, blue on blue. You know, I used, she knew maybe four or five colors really well. So those were the only colors that we used. So you can really use this at any level going all the way down to preschool. Yes. Um, Everly. Uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, so one of the things that we do is the first one you'll see uh, the visit to a zoo. That's just your standard reading passage, sequencing order of events from from the from the passage. And I would do the same thing that we do for a word problem, and that's okay. Well, we would read the passage together. Then we would go back and we would look at what are the pieces of information at the at the bottom of that sheet that it wants us to sequence. And so we go back, we look at the passage, and we say, what's the first thing that happened? What do we underline that with if it's first? What color? Like black color? Mm-hmm. Green. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing we would underline in blue and the third thing in red and the fourth thing in yellow, fifth thing in black, etc. And then we would he could cut out those pieces and look at them and and read what it says and go, oh, that's green. That's going to be first. And so that helps him with uh, the sequencing and order of events. Um, the next thing, when we started working on parts of speech, and this was this was a new thing, um, we I thought, well, I've got all this great stuff in Equipping Minds. How can I use that to learn parts of speech? So we would use, we use colors, but we can also use the symbols. So green is one. What symbol do we use for for one? Circle. Circle. So what is the first part of speech that we usually learn? A noun. So there's not a written order that this has to go. And this was just what I used and what made the most sense for what we what we were learning at the time. So like we would circle the noun. Circle the noun in green. What do we do with the verb? X the verb with what color? Blue. Blue. What do we do with an adjective? Box. What color? Red. That's right. So that we would take a red pen and draw a red box around the adjectives. And so that's how we started working on parts of speech. Well, that later translated into what we're working on now in vocabulary at a high school level, he'll come home from school with, you know, 10 vocabulary words. And a lot of those words are brand new, unfamiliar words. And so the very first thing that we do is we read the word and the definition and we say, well, what part of speech is that? And then the first thing he does is mark those so that the next time we look at that and we're, we have a packet and it and we have a worksheet that says it's a fill in the blank with the correct vocabulary word, then we can take that, we can use the context of the sentence, read the sentence, say, okay, well, I think that this is needs to be a noun, okay? Well, if it's a noun, that means I'm going to look for all of my green words. So we're narrowing down his word bank just went from 10 to maybe three or however many nouns are on the sheet at the time. So that's just another visual way that we could kind of distill it down, simplify it and give him a visual tool for identifying parts of speech and using context of a sentence to determine the part of speech. Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, history. Yes. Yeah, you like history, don't you? Yes. <laughs> so when Addison was in middle school, one of the assignments was um, memorizing the preamble to the Constitution. Uh, <laughs> I see some faces. Yes, we've done that too. Um, and what we did is we took, we've just made, we simplified it. We made it kind of a, um, a fill in the blank. And so the first one, we would make that word green. And then the next one would be blue. And what's really cool about this is, and let me just tell you this works because while what you see up here is all in color, what you have to understand is he studied that way. And then we went to black and white, no color. And he he got a hundred percent on the preamble because he he visually his his memory was recalling that visual information that he had been practicing. So he already knew this word is green. This is my first blank. I know what word was green. Therefore, I mean, he's not thinking this probably through the whole process, but what's really cool is it it, it really does transition. 
So we practiced in color, but then he can take the test in black and white and still not have all the answers. So that was a big deal. Um, and then this year we did, we studied um, for your world. World, world Down Syndrome Day. Oh, well, yes, we did celebrate World Down Syndrome Day. You're right. But for what, what exam? What uh, exam was that? What is it? Mm-hmm. What's, what test was that for? What subject? Do you remember your final exam in what history class are you taking? Um. It was world, civ world civilizations. Ah. What is it? Mm-hmm. So we did the same thing. We broke the um, the test down into a study guide. And the first one was put these things in a sequencing order of events. So we did the same thing. We used the colors for that. Then we broke down, um, he had some information that he had to learn. And so what we did is we took the information and we, of course, we, we did, we connected, um, I can't actually see it, but that's okay. Okay, so Shakespeare down there at the bottom was, Will, yes, I mean, William Shakespeare, you are correct. <laughs> um, <laughs> he was, a, that looks like yellow, right? Okay, and so what I would do is we would find, and we did this together, we would find, well, what is a key word? What does he need to know about William Shakespeare? Well, was he an well, he was an actor, but what well, he was a playwright. So we underlined playwright and William Shakespeare. So I chose like a key word or a key phrase from from the well, it's, it's not really a definition with him, but you know what I mean. And and then he would associate that word and that key phrase together as the same color. And then the same thing um, we did. We used our colored pens and down down here at the bottom, you'll see like he had some multiple choice, um, fill in the multiple choice answers that he had to, to do on the test. But we took the information and did the same thing. We used our colored pens and we, we took like nationalism and he said, okay, well, what's a key phrase from what is nationalism? And so he said, well, our country. So he used green to, to identify that same thing. What, what that did is that gave him his his brain that visual image of this color. And these two words are the same color, so I associate those together. And then when we took he took the test, it was in black and white. So we took the colors away at that point. But do you remember what did you get on your World Civ exam? On your test? Do you remember? Yeah. What did you get? 100 percent yeah so he got so but that just shows you what's really cool about that is that those colors and that association and how the brain works and is able to recall that visual information is key and it transitions it, it stays in there even though he's moved on to 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 black and white so we're always i'm I'm always looking for new creative ways to to learn or to help him learn information for school or really pretty much anything else. And so you'll see that next. So tell me something, Addison, that you do at school, outside, like after school. After school? Mm -hmm. What activities do you participate in? What do you do after school? A, a concert. That is that is from a concert. You're right. A, a and what what do you play in band? What instrument? Drums. Drums. That's right. And do you play? Do you do? Um, what do you do at football games? 
marching band. Marching band. That's right. So he got involved as an eighth grader in marching band and has been doing it every year. Do you love marching band? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so one of the cool thing, we've been really um, fortunate to have teachers who are willing to um, work with us on this and kind of play around and experiment. And Addison's percussion teacher at school actually did, Miss Turner, that's right. She actually did her graduate, her, uh, her doc, well, I, it was her thesis, I guess, on um, working with students with Down syndrome and using a color coding system to teach music. And so that same philosophy that we've been using with um, green and blue and red and yellow, all of that, that we've been associating with numbers, you may know that they are also associated with a letter. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, et cetera. But in music, A, B, C, D, E, F, G are notes. So we took that same philosophy and then applied it to music. And so we started working with Addison on learning how to read music on like notes on sheet music so and that's you know it's a work in progress but as you can see what I did was we took colored painters tape and and we labeled our piano keys and so he'll sit down at the piano sometimes and play and I'll um we'll print off some simple sheet music I'm still standing that's one you're learning that's right and um we will color code the notes according to our equipping minds colors and then he can use that to to play to play music. Um, we also will use a, a whiteboard that has a staff on it, and we'll use our color cubes. I love the color cubes. We use this a lot, <laughs> and and you like color cubes too. And we would I would put color cubes. We started by just doing them in order A B C D E F G, and then. Um, we started going out of order. So I would put, uh, like, you'll see the top left is a yellow color cube, then a black, then an orange. And what he would have to do is he would then have to identify the note. What note is yellow? What note? Mm -hmm. Like what? D. D, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, and so then the next step would be identifying that on the staff. So then we would work on identifying that on the staff. Um, so this we it take it's multiple steps, but you can always just start at the very, very basic. Just try to see if we could. Oh, that's a little bigger. A little bit. <laughs> now you will have this handout. <laughs> yes, you'll have this handout. This is just another example of how we were working with um, a whiteboard and learning how to write the note name and identify where it is on the staff. What are you doing there? Yeah, you sit up so they can't see you. I see the top of your head. <laughs> there you go. Were you writing? What were you writing on the whiteboard? No, that's right. Hmm. What are all of these on the staff? That is letters mm -hmm. for all of your notes. Mm -hmm. Um, so I mentioned that Addison plays, yes, that's you again. <laughs> so there's a picture of him from marching band. He plays with the full fledged high school marching band, um, in percussion. You have your own, uh, drum pad there that you march with, don't you? Yes. Um, do you enjoy marching band? Yes. He does. He loves it. I think football games are your favorite. Yes. <laughs> um, but he has learned to play multiple percussion instruments like he's played timpani before and bells and bass drum and snare drum and mm -hmm. 
and 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 a drum set. Yes, you have a he has a five piece drum set. Um, if you have students or or children that are interested in music, this is completely doable. This is this is a great way to teach. Oh, you remember that piece? Yeah, grandfather's clock. Um, and this is an example of how did we color code the sheet music? So we just used markers, highlighters, whatever we happen to have lying around. And we knew that if it was, you know, are you, are you drumming? If it was um, it's, boring. It's for yes, it is for timpani. That's exactly right. Um, so what, what note was F? That was silly. What note was orange? What? Mm -hmm. what note is orange? F. What? Mm -hmm. And what is red? C. So he would know that they, we could mark the timpani drums if need be. That um, and he uh -huh. would just work with two at a time instead of like four. But uh, he would know that whenever he saw the orange on the page, he knew that was F. So that's this drum. Um, we did the same thing with his drum set at home. We just took, I love painter's tape. <laughs> we just took the different colors of painter's tape and labeled each one of his pieces on his drum set. And then we were fortunate to have an, his private instruction teacher at the time who we took the magnets and he started using color the colors to identify, uh, to teach rhythms and riffs. And so um, if if Cody wanted you to play uh, green and blue stacked on top of each other like that, that's one beat and they plays them simultaneously. So, and then what is black? Yeah. Yes. What is, um, which of your drum, which of your drums is black? Kick, Kick drum and green and blue are? hi-hat and snare that's right so he knew when he saw those together that he's playing both of those pieces both of those instruments well drums at the same time so he was playing cymbal or hi-hat and snare together and then on the next beat was the kick drum so i know that may sound complicated <laughs> But it really does break it down and help. Um, yes, that was our old house. Help, uh, help you to teach that at a level that, and that gives them a visual that's easier for them to understand. Oh, so this was fun. Who is that? Me, Daniel. Daniel. Daniel is a young man who comes over, and he actually works with Addison. <laughs> on tap jazz and ballet and it's really just kind of a, a fun thing to do you know um daniel is awesome he it, he took this and um i don't know if anybody is familiar at all with tap or dance but tap is basically all tap steps are made up of several just basic sounds and um so we took the Equipping Minds colors, and we coordinated those with, I talked to Daniel, and we talked about, okay, what, what are the first things that we learn, like a brush, a spank, a heel, a step, but then when you put those together, they make new steps, so then we could take our colored magnets and put them together and create new steps, and here's a demonstration of how Daniel was teaching him. Jumping back on our list a little bit. What is red? Mm -hmm. And then brown, which we just did in our shuffle, is? Uh -huh. And then green, which we've been doing the whole time, is? Mm -hmm. And our black, which we were doing earlier with our taps and our? Yeah! So putting those four things together, we have a dig, a spank, a step, a heel. And that is called, in its totality, a paradiddle, right? right? Yeah, so we're gonna do big sink. Cool, mm -hmm. sweet.
do this. Another song. Ooh, here we go. Yeah. So the rhythm will be six, Here we go. Nice. Hi. Hey, that was awesome, Madison. You are Mr. Paradiddle. Oh, your dad. <laughs> He's pretty funny. Not good. Jumping back on our list a little bit. What is red? Maybe. There, you go. there we go. Mm -hmm. okay. And then, let's see. Yeah, there it is. So that's just an example of um, that was our little cheat sheet for our tap steps. And then when you put those combinations of those things together, Daniel would use the magnets to visually show that put these three things together, it equals this step, like the paradiddle, um, dig, spank, toe, heel. And that that's four different, four different sounds, four different colors, but put them together and that equals one step. So that's uh that's kind of how we have incorporated it into dance. Um one of this picture up here of the states, this is actually a really cool thing. When he was in um, elementary school, he started working on states. And uh, Addison loves the states and capitals, don't you? Yes, I do. So we same thing when we um, and he he may have started it in elementary, but we continued working that for several years after that. So we did the same thing. We took our map of the United States. We color coded it based on, I did it just based on region. So like mm -hmm. if we started with um, the Northeast as the first region that we learned, then that would be, those states would be green. And we would have, um, we would color each of the states all the way, you know, to the West Coast till we had all of them. And then I would print, I would type up the st the name of the state in the corresponding color. And so what would, what that does is let's say that you're you're not overwhelming your student or your child with all 50 at once. You're starting with just that one region. Well, then you have to introduce the next region. And then all of a sudden you went from maybe five states to 10 or 12 states. But if they're color coded, then they're at least given something where they can visually narrow it down and say, okay, if it's green, I know it's gonna be up here in the Northeast. So um, he did that. And I will tell you, uh, I did a presentation at school on this just a month or so ago. And Addison had not looked at states and capitals for quite a while. And I handed him this map and just blank with the colors, but no, no states, no abbreviations or anything. And he could, he could still write the abbreviation, he could still label every single state. And so that's just a name. Um, yes. <laughs> yes, I can draw a line. But... Oh, yes, you draw the line. Yes. Um, but he, so it just shows you that working those things and having that visual image in, in your mind, it, it sticks with you. Um, and so he has, we've used it, I think that's the last slide, yeah, we've used it just about every way that we can think of. And I'm, and we're always, always looking for new ways. And if we have new information to, that comes home to teach, the very first thing I usually do is, okay, how can I use Equipping Minds to, to teach this? And part of that is because it it's so versatile. And that's one of the things that I hope you guys take away from this is like, you really truly are only limited by your own creativity. You can do anything with this program. And it, it <laughs> do you see you up there? <laughs> um, we, one of the things that we're working on now is using, the, have you done the new cards? The equipment? We've done some, yes. 
Okay. So one of the things that we've started doing, I'll, I'm going to put him on the spot, see if we can do this. Here's our, here's our card. Um, let's say that we're working on adjectives. So Addison, tell me what animal do you see? Mm -hmm. On the card, not there. I know. <laughs> what animal do you see? H. Yes. Um, what letter do you see? H. Good. Now, can you think of an adjective that begins with H? Horse. Mm -hmm. Is check. Horse would be Hog. that would be a verb. So let what kind of fish? A something that begins with H. What is a descriptive word that you could think of that would describe fish? What kind of fish is it? A. Hey. I'm trying to think. Does anyone have happy? Happy could be a happy okay. fish. What else? A hairy fish. I like oh. that. that was good. <laughs> Can you think of any? Happy is a good yeah. one. A happy fish, a huge fish. So yeah. that's just something we started working on recently as we're trying to to learn adjectives and that those are descriptive words. So that's just an you know one <laughs> one small example of of how we how we can use and these cards which are amazing because we use them for all kinds of things. Now, one thing that Addison is really good at think you're still doing it right? right and so if we're gonna say if color is king Ooh. color is king color's in charge what number that's eight it is eight and if color is king what animal That's a fish. It is a fish. Very good. If color is king, what's my letter? That's A. It is an A. Okay. If color is king, what's my symbol? That's A. Check. It is a line. Where do you see your line if color is king? Line above. Line above, yes, since it's black. If color is king, who do you see for your president? That's John Quincy Adams. Yes, it's John Quincy Adams. Okay. <laughs> So Addison's really good with color is king. Um, and we don't even have to make color king. We've also done it where number is king, letter is king, and many different things. But that's something that we had looked at, remember yesterday for a minute, and y'all were like oh, gasping. <laughs> so I knew that was something could could show y'all today. I brought, if anybody wants to see, I brought just some examples of how we have used our colors to, um, in academics and, you know, how we've, yes. Presidents. Oh, what about the presidents? You like presidents, don't you? Who is that? Hoover. <laughs> yeah, so they haven't, we just did the first nine. They don't know Herbert Hoover yet, Addison. But yes, Amy has also been a great resource for the school. And so thankfully this year in particular, yeah, in particular, she has done, um, they brought her in to do a workshop for the teachers that are in, um, uh, that in the Providence in that program. Providence program, 
And mm -hmm. she's been a real support there. And so that has been amazing. And so, you know, many times, um, you know, because a parent has those, those, you'll bring back here, you're, you. you're back. Uh, <laughs> you are back. <laughs> um, but that has been really good that they have, you know, done that. And that's the beauty of Amy keeping for her portfolio and doing the different games. And she was, I will say you all would use Twister. We did. Okay. Yeah. You would use um, play spot it, mm -hmm. but you would have the cards in different locations. Then so add run, run and find, run and grab a card, bring it back and say, I see two, whatever, whatever it was. Yeah. Two logs, two brown logs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so putting movement into it. And so don't think you just have to be sitting. Now, when we would have our sessions or there's times we sit down and do things. Sure. Absolutely there are. But there are also times that, you know, they're they're running around doing things and um, which makes it a lot of fun. So all of the different games Addison has just progressed exceptionally well with. Have you done well? Yes. Yes, yeah. you have. <laughs> and that's what I would say is, like I said, there's really, there's, there's really nothing that you can't do with this program. I mean, you can incorporate it into anything that you are teaching and um, study methods, note taking, you know, all of it. Um, movement. When you have children at home and you you, you've got to get out some of that that physical energy. We would, we would, we'd take the spotted cards and set them up at opposite ends of the basement. And, you know, he would have to run and grab one, bring it back, identify the two items that match and then go do it again. He and his brother, we did Twister and we did, um, what did we do? We took the colors and then we would spin and then I would call out, like if it's right, right hand on green, I would say president. And then they would have to tell me who the president was for green. Who's the president for green? George Washington. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, or you could, and you could change that up. You could use, you could call out the animal or the number or the letter. So um, I'm always looking for creative ways to incorporate this into just normal life. Um, and the other thing we've the other thing we've talked about, and we haven't done it so much, but I know um, that it, when we're learning something, the sequencing is really great. And it could be something simple like, you know, um, like nightly routine. So when it's time to go, is it is it nighttime? Is it bedtime? No. You looking a little tired there? Um, so if you're trying to help, help your child or your student learn, like say nightly routine and you say, okay, go upstairs. What's the first thing they're going to do. You can create, just type up a, a list and the first thing they do it, make it green. And then the second thing they do, make it blue. And the third thing, make it red. And that just kind of helps to reinforce the sequence and order in which they, they need to accomplish whatever they're working on. Yes. And saying your I see you mm -hmm. with that. I Absolutely. see you going upstairs and putting on pajamas. Nice. Going to the bathroom, brushing your teeth, washing your face. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really good for teaching multi-step direction too, because we're at a point now, like he knows his nightly routine really well. Um, but I can go up, I can say, go upstairs and I can list like five different things and he will know which, what those five things are. And you've also um, had a job. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. you run track. Mm -hmm. Are you still running track? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you have two jobs currently, don't you? Yes. Where do you work? Alchemy and Kistabs. So he works at two different restaurants, um, one night a week each. And so he works at Alchemy one night and Gustavo's tonight, actually, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys talked about 
as well? We have not. So um, I wanted to show, because y'all, Amy's the one who introduced me the other day to our new game, which is Uzzle. So we hadn't looked at it yet. I've got it on the table. And so it's a, so take a look, first of all, at the colors you see. So they're all of the Equipping Minds colors, which always makes me smile. The only color we're missing is the brown, okay? And what is fabulous about this is there are four different levels and then there's a picture and then you will create the picture. So it's it's like, just like Let's Match and Extreme Memory, but it's like Let's Match and that they get to look at it you can make it like extreme memory because you can have them look at it and then hide it. And if you are working with a student or you're not able to get multiple games, we also learned that your when you take your Equipping Minds cubes, I want to show this to you. And here, it, if I take three cubes and put them together, and here's my purple block. They are exactly the same size. Okay. They're slippery. Yes. They're exactly the same size. And so when I'm working with students online, I'll put up a picture. I'll have them make what they see. And it they will build this. So this is a building yes, one. Great um, fine motor too. So especially, I mean, this has been just another extra fun thing. So you all have it there in front of you. Some of you all, if you have your cubes online, then you can put three cubes together and you just need to do the way the puzzles are. You only use one color at a time. So you would not, they'll never have you use two green pieces in a puzzle. It's always going to be different. And then when it gets to the upper le levels, take a look at this. Look at where it's going. Okay. So they're looking at it and building it. Or once again, look at it, hide it and build it. Okay. Not there yet. <laughs> Not there yet. And that's why it's great because there are um, multiple levels. Multiple levels and there, I haven't counted these, but a there's lot. a lot of puzzles in here. There's a lot of puzzles. So I wanted y'all to be able to see that. And what level are y'all on right now? Um, He's done most of one. Okay. So I'm going to grab one, one and level two, Addison. Okay. So I'm going to give you this one and I'm going to let the group, if you get out, I see you getting green, red, blue, and white. White can be a little trickier to see, but let's go ahead and get those. And you can either use, you should be able to use the Uzzle pieces. You may have enough in the group or somebody might have, well, you know what? I've got some extra up here. I just need to be sure and get them back. Because we, it's tricky when you do that. So Addison, you want to go ahead and make it, make what you see. Sure. All right, let's see if we can do that one. Okay. Oh, it, you know, it can be. Um, let me hold it up for a minute. Okay, can y'all see that? All right, so look at that. Look at your green. And where do you where see do you the see? red? Where do you, you see the red? out of my mouth. <laughs> where do you see the red? The Addison, Dark. look at the red in relationship to the green. Is it on top of the green or beside the green? No. Good side. Good side. Good side. There we go. Exactly right. And where do you see the point? Yes, very good. And then, where do you see? 
the blue. And leave it there. Do you have a match? Yes. You do. So then that's when we'll say, do you have a match? Do y'all have a match? Yes. Okay, let's do another one. Y'all ready to do another one? I think that's your favorite part. <laughs> I have y'all on level two for a minute. Ooh, we're taking it up a notch. Oh, I see some new colors. Ooh. Okay, so we're going to get out. I see a purple. I see an orange i know this is only level two yeah y'all are like wait a minute and here's a black so let's look at our card and so you can look at the bottom what do you see on the bottom what do you see on the bottom mm -hmm. Good. what do you see next Very nice. Hey, how are we doing? Do we have a match? Do we have a match? Do you have a match? Yes. Yeah. Okay, y'all ready to try to do one like extreme memory? Yeah. Oh, oh, no. oh yeah. <laughs> Addison's over here. Oh yeah. Uh, okay, we'll start. Okay, we'll start with three things, okay? Good so idea. I see you taking a picture in your mind. Don't start building yet. I just see you taking a picture. <laughs> I see you taking a picture. Do you have your picture? Do you have your picture in your mind? Yep. Okay, picture's taken. Now, make what you saw. I know. Now, what was the bottom color? It's close to orange. Check your bottom color. I so. Mm -hmm. I get that a lot now. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> What's the closest one? Uh, to there you there go. we go. Now, there you go. I know those two can look alike. And what did you see on the top? Yes. Here you go. Okay. Are we ready? Whoops. Do you have a match? Yes. And some of y'all, um, sometimes red and orange can be a little tricky when you're looking at them. So that was something that Addison had orange for a minute. And we were like, oh, I'll check that because he had the other. But then he had to think about that. He wasn't able to, I didn't show him the card again. And so he still had to hold on to the other two things while we were. And he said, you know, to his mom, are you sure? <laughs> and that, we're like, it's something that's very close. And so he went and switched it with the red. Because that is the one that if you're going to, that can be tricky. Okay. Y'all want to do one more? Sure. Do I like those? I know. I think these are super fun. I like these. Okay. So this one may be a little trickier to see. This is white. What colors do you see yourself? Okay. So take a picture in your mind. This is purple. So I see white, I see green, I see purple, purple, and I see orange. Okay, so can you, what colors do you see yourself? In? Okay. Take your picture. Y'all have your picture? Okay. Allergies are really. Uh -huh. So what do you see next? What do you see next? Yes, purple is in the middle. Good job. 
Check that. It's the one that's close to that. There you go. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, let's check. Do you have a match? Addison does. This is the first time Addison has done this with uh, doing it from memory. But you know what? I felt like he could yeah. do it. And he he didn't sit here and tell me no. He was like, yeah, let's try it. And I, you know, knew he could do it. Okay. So, I mean, we could literally sit here all day and do tons of games with Addison. But I have wanted... Y'all have been seeing Uzzle on your table. And like I said, it's a new one. It It is a little pricey. Uh, when you look on Amazon, it'll say 49. Right now it's on sale for 29. Okay. Um, but when you look at the pieces, it is for four people. So there are 32 blocks. There's tons of puzzles. And, and these are good quality. And if you have just one, and then you can have other students use the cubes, you know, if you want to, um, that works. I think, you know, some people have the other Unifix cubes that you have to kind of interlock those. Ours are the, ours are the linking cubes. So yeah. That, so that these, still do that. these are smoother. So as you're just playing around, but um, yes. So any questions for Amy or Addison right now? Okay, and I thought y'all might be a little blown away by how to take it and implement it with your, um, yeah, with the academics, but really bridging, as you kept hearing us say, step by step, step by step, but not just step by step, but you will hear you will see things under some strategies and different things where they'll say, oh, use color coding or, you know, different things. But there's not like a, that green is one and blue is two and red is three and yellow is four. That that stays, that that's the constant really, okay? Um, because then you can have different teachers doing different things and, you know what I'm saying? So when there's not that consistency, and then you're bridging it over. And that's why it was so, I don't want to say easy, but almost when they were doing that with, with music and with the piano. I mean, we've had a lot of our kids that when they see that green and the blue and because they've already learned because A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know, they know those letters that go with the colors and so it's like oh okay they've got a bit of an advantage actually so that has worked really well i think there even is a music program that does utilize colors when they're teaching music there's there one particular one um it doesn't line up with ours but it was interesting that um someone had created something like that because they saw it was effective and we're just able to use use our colors with that. Carol, one of the things that I thought of is when you're working with, I don't know if most everybody here are teachers or, um, but whether parents, teachers, when you start, when you learn a click in minds and let's say you're, you're starting young, the nice thing about it is you don't ever have to learn another system for well, as they get older and progress. So for example, for Addison, when we started this, you know, in sixth grade, I didn't have to worry about when he transitioned to high school that we were going to have to use, learn a new method of study. Our, we already had the foundation. We already had it in place. So at 
Christian Academy, where he goes to school, there's they have a Providence program, which is specifically for students with Down syndrome. And those students, they go all the way down to, to pre-K. So if, if they're, if you think about this, if they're learning this in kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth grade, and then they move to middle school where they have to start taking notes and studying for exams and things like that, they already have a system in place. They already have the foundation and they already know. So they're, they're already going to be transitioning in so many other areas and learning so many things. This is this is a consistent platform that they can learn from when they're young all the way through the rest of their life. And my husband was talking to me. He had some things that he has to, to work on and study. He's like, hey, can you come up with some program or something for me to learn these? So it's like, yeah, I got you covered. We can do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, that's one of the things I really love is that that consistency is is great and it lays that foundation. And I know that all through middle and high school, Addison was going to be using the same system to study mm -hmm. and may look different depending on what subject and how we're applying it. But but green is always one. Right. Blue is always two. You know, it's always A, it's always B. So that's already, that foundation is yeah. laid. So that makes everything else simpler for them as they are progressing through school. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you all for coming and sharing today. And like I said, you will have access to that file, which is fabulous.